Well, hello everyone and welcome to 30 Teens, 30 Dreams, Destination University. If you're a college bound teen or a parent of one, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. We're running a special series this entire month of April, interviewing a different senior from high school every single day of the month and finding out what their college admission journey was, where they applied, where they've been admitted, and where they will land this fall as a member of the class of 2025. Today, we get a special treat. We are go you're going to meet Gabriella, also known as Gabby, who has a special eye for design, and she has searched high and low looking for the perfect college that has the perfect major that's exactly right for her and just as perfect as she is. She's earned um, merit money and she's looking to finally decide where she's going to land and where she will be. Where she, will she be in, in the South? Will she be on the East Coast? Will her parents miss her greatly? I know they will. So you're going to meet her in just a second. But if you are a parent, we want to just encourage you, if you do nothing else today, join us on our Facebook group, Destination University. Whether your teen is middle school or high school, if they are college bound, it's the group for you. So let's go ahead and dive right in and meet Gabby. Gabby, can you hear me? Let's see, check your sound. Yes. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Ready to rock and roll? Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, you know, I have five questions for every student. And the first question is all about, share with our viewers and listeners, where did you apply? And specifically, you know, um, you have a, a great specific major. So share with us how you found the schools that you did and why you, you, you landed with those schools. Yeah, so the main thing that helped me narrow down my schools is that I knew I kind of wanted to be on the coast. Um, and But then I also added in Texas there because my cousin goes to TCU and I just thought it'd you know, be really good because they have really good art programs down there. But I mainly knew that I wanted to do more of a small to medium sized school. I didn't want a ton of people. I wanted to have that really good tight knit community and continue out my Catholic education. So that was also a big factor in deciding. Um, the main thing that helped me kind of come up with the list was when we went on to the College Board website and like looked at my major and which schools offered it and had really good programs. Um, and then I kind of just looked at the pictures. I made um, a slideshow presentation for my parents and we had the whole night like narrowing them down. I got their favorites, got my favorites, and that's kind of how I, I did it. Um, and it was really fun to get them involved too, so. Okay, yeah, okay, that is the sweetest thing I've ever heard. So I love that you said that. Okay, parents are going to love you already. Like, oh, I, I want to do that. So you're an only child, am I correct? Yeah. And so this is the first and only time your parents are going to go through this. And can you, just picking up on that little bit, can you just share maybe a little bit more on how you kept your, your parents involved? Because I know they wanted to be involved and it's sometimes hard for teenagers. So what kind of um, routine did you have to keep them involved? Yeah, so I, I kind of just would update them like on the stats of the schools. My mom is an interior designer, so she's big on the look. So I'd always show her pictures of the schools. And then once I was narrowing it down, they both like at night would watch YouTube videos together on like the students that go there or anything that like the schools have posted themselves um, to just try to like get themselves into like the mindset because um, we didn't really have to choose my high school. My dad went to um, the joint high school to mine. So they've kind of always been involved and this is like a new process. I could kind of go anywhere. So they really wanted to know what the schools had to offer. Your parents are so sweet. So, so sweet. So, um, okay. So question number two is looking back on your high school years um, and preparing for applying to college. What did you do right? What kind of advice would you share with others? I think the best thing that helped me was because I, I didn't, I went in not knowing about any colleges at all um, going into senior year. I really like, I didn't like the idea sophomore year of like thinking about colleges already. It felt too soon. It, I, I, I don't know anything, but um, doing the college essay camps, like that kind of got me into the mindset of like, I'm writing it. Um, I'm really getting to like know what colleges like about me, what stands out about me. And it helps just really like solidify in your mind, like what you offer to these schools, because like you're offering these schools, like your position, they're not offering you theirs. So um, that, I think the essays was like the best thing 
that I did. And I also, um, if any schools offered early action, I applied early action just so I could get to know earlier. And I, I got at seven out of the 11 schools had early action and I heard back from all of them. Um, and I got accepted from all of them when like late in the fall. So that was really, really nice to hear because my friends are worried and I already had colleges I could go to. And it just felt really nice to know that these schools wanted me. So I definitely say early action is another great thing to do because you just get all that pressure off really fast. <laughs> it's definitely a confidence booster, right? Like to know, some students know as early as you know, Halloween or Thanksgiving or before the holiday season in December. And I'm sure you, like you said, it just was a pressure off because someone someone wanted you and you were going to college. Like you were like, I'm going to college. Someone wants me. <laughs> yeah, that's great advice. That's really great advice. Now, um, question number three is, what is your coolness factor? And we talk about coolness factor. It's different for everybody. Sometimes you don't necessarily know what it is, but for you, can you share a little bit? You said you know, the schools in Texas had your major. So what was your major and what's your coolness factor sort of tied to all of that? So um, my main major for most of my schools is art history um, because I know that I kind of want to go more into the art background. Um, I'm not STEM focused as much, but more art based, especially getting inspiration from my mom um, and all of that she does. But it's specifically at Baylor and TCU and just all the Texas schools there, they have a lot of specific design art majors. And so I applied fashion merchandising for those schools because um, they just had really, really interesting programs. You kind of dig deep really quickly into other topics. Um, so I thought that was really cool for me. And another thing about like the cool inspector, and I think um, what I really liked about my essays was writing about food and my family and cooking, because that's like a really, really big part of my life. And all my friends know that. Um, and so I think just kind of meshing two kind of completely different um, parts of my life together um, to show to the colleges, I think was really nice and fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, I remember uh, meeting your parents and you, you mentioned already your mother is an interior design designer. And um, she mentioned right away that you have this eye for design and, and spatial, um, spatial things. And also then your dad, I can't remember, I don't know what it's called. He uh, works in the wine industry and he talked about your heightened sense of, of smell. And so maybe being the daughter of these two creative types, but you really love the cooking aspect and, and sort of, you know, uh, putting things together. Um, and then also this design piece. So can you just share a little bit more about that? Like you, you have this creative heightened sense of, I guess, uh, what is it? See no evil, hear no evil. Like, your smell, your taste, but everything you do is all creative, right? So can you just share a little bit about what does that mean in your life? Yeah, so I think for me, I've always known that like color and design and just art-based things were always um, a section that I wanted to look into when I could finally, you know, move into like a more specific education and I always when I was little like I wanted to be a painter I wanted to be an artist I wanted to get into design I always had coloring books but I could I always liked you know making something that was already a thing and kind of changing it and adding things to rooms and kind of doing more of that instead of being an artist and having to completely like make something from scratch I like putting things together with already existing pieces and I think that's also similar in cooking where you take different foods and cultures and make them and blend them into one um, and I it was kind of hard because I didn't know if I wanted to go more like food based or go more art based and I decided to go more art based because there were a whole like myriad of realms that I could go into and just really explore because I don't know the specifics um, of what I want to do but just that I know I love history and I love art and I love going into that and cooking kind of was like you either um, work for a chef or you are a chef and cooking the same thing every day didn't seem as interesting to me but of course like we all have to eat so I'll still be cooking anyway for myself so that's kind of how I I chose um and led yeah. my path <laughs> you know you really did a great job of using sort of cooking as a metaphor for adding and blending and 
and taking pieces that, that, and then making them your own. So really great. Awesome. Okay. Question number four is, do you have any regrets? Is there a regret that you can look back? And if so, how do you use that to give good advice for others? Um, I, I really like how I did everything. Like I know I was a little stressed because I didn't know anything about any colleges going into senior year, but I still made it work and I love the places I applied to. But I think the one thing that I would probably do again is start familiarizing myself with schools um, a little bit more before I do the application process. Um, I know a lot of people with siblings, um, you've already experienced this with older siblings, them applying to colleges and you kind of know about colleges or if your family loves football, you know about some of the bigger colleges. And I didn't really know all of that. Um, and I think familiarizing yourself, whether it be for your own application or just kind of for the talk around you is really nice to have. Um, and knowing, you know, what other colleges specialize in, how big they are, um, what majors mainly study there is really nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of um, what I think I probably would have done more. Um, and just talking with friends and seeing where everyone else applied, you can kind of be like, oh yeah, I remember this program that they had and um, maybe going to college fairs your sophomore year or freshman mm -hmm. year to introduce yourselves would be nice to have. I'm curious to know how many colleges were on your presentation when you presented to your parents? Um, about like, I think 27 and I applied to 11. So we narrowed it down. <laughs> oh, that is a great thing. I'm going to have to ask your mom and dad about that. So that's a good little piece of advice. Okay. So the moment of truth is coming really close. So I'm on question number five. So before you reveal to the world where you're headed, what two or three, which two or three did you narrow it down to? So I, I kind of knew ever since I was in fourth grade, that I wanted to go to the East Coast. I wanted to change the scenery. I wanted seasons. Um, everyone questions if I really want the cold and I do. <laughs> I really want to experience snow. And so um, I took off my California schools that I got accepted to off the list. And I was like, I'm gonna, you know, finally make this change and not, I, I won't regret it. I know I won't, I can always come back. So I narrowed that down and then I wasn't really sure if I should go to Rhode Island or Massachusetts and then Easter break we visited Boston and I just loved the city so I knew the two schools um, in and around Boston were the ones that I had to um, choose and that's just kind of how I narrowed it down but yeah. <laughs> okay so go ahead and share with everyone where you will be a freshman. I'm going to be a freshman at Holy Cross. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh my gosh! So amazing. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful campus. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's uh, how close is it to, to the city, Boston? It's 45 minutes to an hour um, outside of Boston. They have um, buses at the school that go to Boston every day. Um, and I had another school, Suffolk, which is in downtown Boston, but I realized that I wanted a full campus experience with a field and just a ton of different buildings and all the nature around. So um, that helped my decision in choosing Holy Cross, but I'm really excited. It's a um, really nice community. Yeah, I've been following people and, you know, just seeing um, all the other kids who are making their decisions and it's just a really fun process. Oh my goodness. And it's some insane number of number of colleges that are in and around the Boston area. You're basically going to have four years with, you know, people basically your age, uh, all pursuing, you know, college degrees. And so you're going to get to meet a lot, a lot of people and, and, and have a great time there. So, oh my goodness, I'm super excited for you. And um, something that Gabby mentioned earlier is um, going to College Board and using College Board as a way to find her major and then using, once you know one school that has the major that you're looking for, it's easy to use College Board as a springboard to clicking on that and then saying, find the other colleges with this same major. And so we sort of uh, did a big um, spreadsheet, you know, sort of a spreadsheet on that. So, okay, hang tight. I'm going to do a wrap up and then we'll say goodbye at the end. I told you you would love her. Oh my gosh, she is. So she's so creative and um, she's going to be great with whatever she chooses to do now, now and in the future. So congratulations, Gabby. 
Thank you for sharing some time with us today uh, for 30 Teens, 30 Dreams, Destination University. We will continue tomorrow and for the rest of the, the month, and so continue to follow us. Again, parents, we want to invite you to join us on Destination University, the Facebook group, where I give the double insider scoop to all the, the families there. If you want to learn a little bit more about the college application process, it's never too early. Just start learning a little bit about the tools and strategies and the inside behind the scene truths that maybe you don't yet know. So go and I'll pop the, the link inside the comments so you can follow it there and get it. You can follow this whole series on Facebook and of course, Instagram. They're also posted, these videos are posted in IGTV and they'll be later posted on YouTube as well later in June. Tomorrow, you're going to meet a Sose, and she hails from Southern California. Our, um, our interview will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And she is choosing between UCLA, Princeton, and Brown, biochemistry major who has her own jewelry business. So you don't want to miss tomorrow at 6 p.m. Again, we want to thank the team, the entire team. It takes a village to make all of this happen. Thanks, team, for doing everything you're doing for a full 30 days. Okay, so a little bit of, all right, Gabby, wave goodbye, I'm super excited. <laughs> Congratulations to you. I've got my, my purple, <laughs> my royal purple dress on just for you, and I got my little nails, so you're going to be great. Please say hello to mom and dad for me, and uh, tell them I'll be in touch so I can, I want to see that presentation of 27 schools. I'm dying about it. <laughs> okay, wave to everyone. All right, have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.